those big one-liners like, uh, you know, so how are you doing today? And he'll go, I'm doing amazing. Today is amazing. I mean, he, he's a little extreme about it, but you know what? I watch people. Within 10 seconds, they I mean, it doesn't hurt that he's 6'8 and good looking, okay? So there's a little bit of rapport there that happens. And there's that other stat that people judge tall people in a good way. If you're over six foot two, they have a different perception of you versus if you're short. This is, this is stats. I mean, it's unfortunate reality, but we do. We see some guy who's 6'8", we go, oh, we want to be with him. We want to hang out with him because he's good looking and he's tall. So he has that going for him, but even if he didn't, if he was, you know, six foot my height, he still has the ability to put his state out there, but he works on it. So he's, he's literally written out in his journal. Uh, he went to a, a I want to say like a thesaurus years ago when we were working together, and he came up with a series of words that are his go-to words. He uses amazing, his, his big one is, uh, what was the one he taught you? I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. And people, you know, they, they just, whoa, whoa, I'm on fire. I mean, some people don't cater well to that, but the stats that I've watched, you know, unscientifically, it's not a very big percent. 90% of the guy in his interactions, people like it because it feeds. It lets you know, hey, I'm a good guy, I'm positive, and I'm going to make you feel good. So when you get that sense room, and, you know, he's got his suit and the get up and all that stuff, but he's very conscious to his state management. Most people are not, by the way. Most people are aware of what they dress like, but they're not thinking about their physiology. Shoulders back, most people are shallow breathers. Most of you in this room, because you've been sitting, you've been breathing with 20% of your lung capacity. So if I got you to stand up right now, put your shoulders back, take a deep breath, and hold it for 15 seconds, your brain would feel woozy. You'd go, whoa, because you just had a rush of oxygen that hit your brain. So it's just being conscious to breathing, shoulders, chin, you can spot it, you know what I mean, when you can spot somebody who has poor posture or poor physiology or they, they're just down all the time. So I, I, I'm not as good as Dan is, but whenever I go to a restaurant or I walk into somewhere, I, I, I put myself in state. Tony Robbins is amazing. He does these, he does these things called power moves. It sounds kind of goofy, but he, his whole thing is motion creates emotion. So when he, before he goes on a stage, he's got a trampoline back there, and he's 6'7", so he's jumping on the trampoline, getting his heart rate up before he's getting his introduction. He's got his routine. So then he does this move. He does this whole, like, karate, taekwondo thing. I don't know. It's crazy. But it, and I've, I've seen it because I work for the guy. So we're back in Madison Square Garden. I think it was the first time I ever saw him do it. And everybody, all the teammates are like, step back. He's getting ready to do it, man. He's doing it. So you see Tony, all 6'7", of him. He starts going into this crazy state. Uh, and I saw, I don't know if you guys saw this, Oprah Winfrey did a two-series interview with Tony um, in January, I think is what it was. And it was, it, she, Tony let her come into his three-day seminar, which he never does. He doesn't let media usually do that. That's the fire walk. Oprah went through the whole day and a half. She did the fire walk. It was, it was pretty cool. I, I actually gained some respect for her because, you know, she's important. You know, she would just show in, you know, she said as a reporter. But she goes, man, I just, this guy sucked me in. There was something about his state. Like, as soon as he got up on stage, he was like, how do you not listen to this guy? But she's, you know, thinking, how the hell am I going to walk on fire? <laughs> they got the coals out there. Tony always has the big screen, you know, throughout the first night. Hey, guys, this is where we're going tonight. Look at the fire. People are freaking out. Because, you know, that's like one of the top five fears people have is fear of fire or heat. But, you know, he does these moves, and he shows it on the video. If you guys Google it, you guys can see what I'm talking about. Because I've never seen Tony let anybody see his power move unless you're working for him. But he showed it on Oprah, the whole thing. <laughs> so he does that stuff. He used to walk, when he was a sales guy working for Jim Rohn doing seminars, he would he'd always come into the uh, front uh, office, say real, you know, hi to the gatekeeper or whatever, and he'd always ask for the bathroom. Hey, where's the bathroom? And he'd go in the bathroom and he'd just stare himself down and start doing all these crazy power moves. And he'd come out just with a pep in his step. Because his belief was, if I manage my state well, it'll magnetize people because people do make that impression within, you know, 30 seconds or more. It's pretty funny, but it, it's kind of cool when you get to see it behind the scenes. I'm, I was watching it with my wife. I'm like, oh, my God, he's doing the power move on TV. I can't believe this. It's like such a private thing for the guy, but he doesn't care. He's, he, he's, he was different. I, I mean, when I worked for him, I, I look back and kind of in awe. I worked for him. He was, he was 38 years old. He employed 250 employees at the time, had three homes, owns an island in Fiji, two best-selling books. By the time he was 30, 35. So now Tony's, you know, 51, and as he's gotten older, he doesn't care. It's 
like, yeah, I'm not 38 anymore. I'm, you know, who cares? Remarried, you know, got my whole new business identity. It's not about just doing seminars. He doesn't travel as much as he used to. It's because, he's, he, as he'll tell you, he's getting older. But I'll tell you, that guy will get on that stage from 8 in the morning till midnight, five days in a row. I mean, you, you, the thing that always would joke is like, when's he take a piss? Because <laughs> he's up there. I mean, he doesn't take breaks. I mean, he, he literally, when he takes breaks for you guys, he's out there amongst the the audience, you know, talking to the people, shaking hands and stuff like that. And he, Oprah asked him about it. And he's like, yeah, you know, there's some certain days you just got to manage your state, as he says. He goes, you guys get to have your, uh, what you call one, one function breaks. And you work, when you work with Tony in, the, in a company meeting like this, one function break means you got one function. Go make a phone call, that's it. Two functions would be make phone call, go bathroom. So when we were working for the organization, he would say, okay, guys, one function break means you got five minutes. And he's adamant, like if that, that door shuts and you went two functions, then you're out of integrity with yourself and you're not honoring the group. I mean, it's pretty you know, religious in that way, but you know, there's certain days where you just want like a five function. <laughs> you're like, man, I need like 25 minutes. You're just killing me. You're like a fire hose coming at me for five hours straight, so. All right, cool, any other questions? So we'll take a quick break. Two function? Two function break, two function break, 10 minutes, cool.